Apex community, I think we need to have a conversation about your handling of understanding information that you get, right? I want to talk about the history of content of Apex Legends to discuss why you should have picked up on so many issues way earlier than you have because I find it so funny that we are frustrated with the game now but the game has honestly been the most consistent game out there. My name is Flame 70 the normal gamer breaking down concepts from gaming and Apex from this very perspective. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So an overview of what we've been discussing in this video, right, is I'm breaking down the whole 13 season time frame of content to establish a pattern, right? Then afterwards, I'm going to discuss where you should have been paying attention, where you should have actually been upset to actually be on top of things. Next, after breaking that down, I'm going to give my thoughts on why you guys are actually upset and disproving kind of all those things. And overall, you know, just hopefully leading up to a healthy discussion on what to do next. But overall, Apex has been pretty consistent. And let's jump right into that. Apex Legends launches on February 4th, 2019 with obviously 43 days of the preseason. Nothing crazy there. It's a brand new game. Who cares? Season 1 Wild Frontier launches with Octane on March 19th and it has one event. The legendary hunt that will happen on June 4th cool nothing crazy out there next season battle chart season two launches on july 2nd with two key things the iron crown and void walker event iron crown happening on august 13th and void walker happening on september 3rd one thing to note here is now we're into the you know over 100 days of apex we're starting to establish patterns new legend every season and a couple of events sprinkled in. So in season two, July 2nd, one month afterwards, first event lasts for two weeks, two weeks of nothing, then event for two weeks and then nothing. And then boom, that leads us into season three on October 1st. Okay, new legend, new map. Awesome. And then we have a couple of key things here. A Halloween event on October 15th, a Christmas event on December 12th, and the Grand Soiree on January 14th. Now that we here, we can pick up exactly on what they're establishing here, where we're approaching the first year of Apex, right? The start of a season, cooldown. A two-week event, cooldown. Two-week event, cooldown, new season, right? Because we're establishing these patterns now. This is what we're seeing. With And if you're paying attention to the dates, look at that. Cool. Season four starts on the anniversary of Apex Legends, February 4th, with kind of a couple of key things here, four things to be exact. Mini Valentine's Day thing, system override on March 3rd, old ways on April 7th, battle armor on April 28th. Okay? Pattern has been met and has been consistent. Go on to season five, starting on May 12th, with two key things happening there. Lost treasure on June 23rd and always be closing uh, just, just a game mode that started on August 11th, which leads us into season six on August 18th. All right. We have September soiree on September 8th, aftermarket on October 6th, a teaser on October 13th for Horizon and a Halloween event October 22nd. All right. That goes on to season seven, now starting on November 4th, introducing a brand new map and two key things that are going on, which is another Christmas event and fight night, okay? Christmas event happening on December 1st and fight night happening on January 5th, okay? So with that, we have season eight, starting on the second anniversary of Apex Legends on February 2nd, with a couple of key things that happened this season. The anniversary event on February 9th, the Chaos Theory event on March 9th, War Games on April 13th, and the Arena teaser that was on April 16th. All right, we're seeing the pattern here. Are we establishing it? Get it through your heads, guys. We have eight seasons now. We've been pretty consistent. Cool. Season 9, May 4th, Genesis happens on June 29th, and you know we have Thrill Seekers on July 13th. God, this is mad annoying. 
Season 10 starts on August 13th with Evolution on September 14th. Bloodhound mini cool story thing on September 29th. And then a Halloween event on October 12th. All right, really cool, really cool. Season 11 starts on November 2nd with Raiders happening on December 7th and Dark Thefts happening on January 11th. Season 12 starts on February 8th, the third anniversary of Apex Legends with the anniversary event on February 15th, the Warriors event on March 29th, and with a little teaser on that same day on March, on March 29th with William, and Unshackled on April 19th. Now we're at season 13, current season, May 10th is the launch date and the first kind of thing that happens one month later, June 21st. All to say is we have established a consistency of a pattern. Nothing has changed, right? If you're mad about release schedule and content, why? They have been consistent. But now this is where we go into the deep dive, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you probably, if you were to get upset, you should have probably caught this earlier. So just because Apex has been consistent doesn't mean it's always been good. And you start seeing the pitfalls, I believe, around season five. OK, season five, we saw two big things. But what happens? Lost Treasure introduces an old rehashed event and we have a rehashed always be closing. OK, weird. They did a couple of Mac changes. All right, cool. We have the, this was the PVE quest thing, which was actually really cool. Um, so, okay. All right. Nothing crazy, but I'm not liking, at least me, I didn't like the fact that we were rehashing a lot of stuff, especially that consistently. Season six had the September soiree, which was four rehashed events for the full, for that for all month of September. Okay. Cool. We had crossplay happening with Aftermarket, which is the biggest thing. We had a teaser, fine, and then a rehashed, retweaked Halloween event. Again, in itself is not bad, but there's nothing new. But season six also introduced a crafting system, had a couple of tweaks, like every season introduces something, right? Which is really, really cool. Season seven, we see a new map, Olympus, right? Um, we have a rehashed Christmas event, then Fight Night, which I believe brought in the airdrop escalation where Every round closing brings you different rarity drops where you can go and pick up and whatnot. All right, that's new, something exciting. And they did some tweaks a lot for season seven, especially with a map, but okay. But that lingering rehashing thing, it's still there. Season eight had a collection anniversary event where in this anniversary, particularly, this is where we start seeing the shift of what we see the game today. Two shields, two syringes, and evil shield. Everyone starts us off with that. The only thing different is uh, when they teased this, you started off with a Mozambique. Obviously, that didn't go into the main game. Chaos Theory, I believe, had Ring Fury. Okay, on something new, something exciting. It did, you know, where the ring was inside the circle and it kind of locked out areas inside the, inside the ring. All right, pretty cool. War Games, then, this is where things are interesting. And this is where I'm going to take the point a little bit of time to explain a couple of things. A rehashed concept, right? Multiple LTM type ideas within a time frame. That's what the Grand Soiree, which was really loved by all. But here's the problem. Second Chance only ran for one day when it was supposed to run for multiple. Auto Banners ran for one day when it was supposed to run for multiple. Armor Regen was an okay idea, but... And then we had Ultra Zone, which was a rehash of Ring Furies. Um, with a couple of tweaks. So at this point on season eight, there are two things that I want to like, I pointed out and I saw we're rehashing stuff and we're still really bad at fixing the game because two things that they wanted to release, right? Broke the game, which has been, it's a consistent pattern up on this, this point And also later on with season nine, when they crashed the entire game. So at this point, we have shown been shown consistency in, okay, we're like the easy way out and we're terrible at fixing our game. This is season eight, by the way, okay? So keep that in mind. Season nine, we got a new game mode, really cool. Genesis rehashing old maps, not really content, and the uh, event for that new game mode. All right, that's fine. 
overall, there's still a hint of rehashing, but we got a lot of stuff new, so who cares? Season 10, we're continuing on this trend. Evolution was brought the Rampart Arena event, so we're continuing on hammering out arena stuff. Whether you like it or not is besides the point also, ladies and gentlemen. That's really besides the point. Uh, we got ranked arenas also, and then we have a rehashed Halloween event. Okay? Uh, then Season 11, brand new map comes out. Cool. We got it. The Raiders event brings back the Christmas event. And then the Dark Debs, I believe, didn't do anything in terms of game modes. Just was a theme event. And a bunch of sales, right? So over like these two seasons, a bunch of sales. <clears throat> uh, season 12, we have an anniversary event that brought in control. Something new, right? A tweak to the old map, something new. But then the next event brings back that something new to tweak it. And then we end off with another event that brings back another rehashed um game mode all right so what i'm getting at here is if you were cognizant of the game if you're mad like so i've talked about content bug fixes and ranked if you were cognizant about the game you should have realized that in terms of content the quality was dipping since season five and bug fixes was also declining just as badly throughout these seasons. So for me personally, I recognize this. So in season five, season six, and season seven, and even a little bit of season eight, I was like, oh, I'm not liking this pattern. Season nine comes around. Genesis was like my last fit because I was super mad about war games because I was really enjoying what they had to offer, but it was just so scuffed. And then also the shitty launch of season nine, I'm like, oh my God. Why do they keep releasing and breaking stuff in their game? So on Genesis, which was on June 29th, right? I decided I'm not going to drop money on this game because of the current issues. Content was really disappointing and more so the it was unacceptable how they were handling game breaking things in the game. And then I didn't repurchase something until the Warriors event in season 12, which was the, 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 the Crypto Heirloom, which was March 29th. So 11 months. The point that I'm making here is consistency from Apex has been A1. It is up to you, the players, to react to these sort of things in a timely manner. 11 months is a long time to deal with bad behavior. Now, again, I'm not trying to say that you guys are wrong for being upset or losing patience, but <coughs> you waited so long. Each season is roughly three months. If you would have all done what I did back in season nine, right? Just to keep a glimpse. This is why I think the, the, the strike is so stupid. Collection events are roughly $160, right? And then let's just say 144 themed events. I don't know. I've never really cared about the themed events. So 160, 140, 160, 140, 160, 140, plus all these other freaking sales. 160, um, 160. 140, 160. That's a lot of money to be dropping on a game for an extended period of time knowing that they are doing bad behaviors. One, rehashing, one, rehashing content and two, being very unacceptable when it comes to addressing fixes. So the message is then, okay, you made as a player base allowed for what? Five, six, uh, like what? Eight seasons? Nine seasons of bad behavior to be accepted? Why would they care to change now? You gave them so much money in the long process, right? So that's the other thing. And if you're mad about ranked, 
uh, sorry to tell you, but you're wrong and you should get over it. And I covered that in a different video. Go check it out. I'm not getting into that here, but I think that is very stupid to be upset about um, at Apex when they actually did something really good, which was fix the rank system. It all comes down to Apex being a shitty live service, which I covered on this channel. The point is, Apex has been consistent and consistently bad and degrading over the last year and a half. And you took so long to get upset about it. Do you really think now being upset is going to make waves? Truly, they've already taken so much money out of you. The future is bleak and I'm going to cover next the harsh reality of like fixing certain issues actually might be a problem but that would be for another video so i encourage you to subscribe to check that out but we're left at the point where i think this is the game we're going to be stuck with for a while so if that's going to be the case you have to make a decision being upset is not going to change anything so you're either going to stick with this game as it is or you're going to leave. That is the harsh reality of everything. Because again, on a technical level, I hate to break it to you, they are in for a doozy. But as a player, you should have caught on to all these things way earlier. And maybe you would have had a chance to salvage something. But that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think? Let's have a discussion down below. My name is Flame 078 Until next time, adios.